My name is Alexander Martin. My name is Dan Lee. I'm Alex Silver. Um, my name is Karee. And I am a senior here at Northwestern University. I'm a dual degree student studying mechanical engineering and violin performance in the music school. I am a senior uh, ready to graduate studying mechanical engineering. I am a senior uh, majoring in material science and engineering. I'm majoring in computer science. And I am the current project manager of the Northwestern Solar Fair team. I am the chief mechanical engineer on the team. As a senior mechanical member, I manage uh, sort of individual projects as they come up. And I'm the publicity manager for the Solar Fair team. So the Solar Fair team was started by a group of students in 1997 here at Northwestern University. Um, There's like probably five students and three advisors. Um, who got together and wanted to participate in the solar car racing. Solar car racing has been around since the mid-70s. Uh, the solar car team primarily competes in an annual race. Uh, it is an annual track race, the Formula Sun Grand Prix. Basically, the premise of the race is that at the beginning, you start with a full battery pack that is fully charged. Uh, but then once the race begins, for the next three days or five days for the cross-country race, all your energy must come from the sun, and the solar array must be attached to your car. Uh, so basically they impound your batteries, they make sure that you're not charging them through other means, but it's essentially in, you know, using every last drop of energy you have to make a car go as far as you can. So there's the two different races. The track race, um, it drives by itself. Um, there's obviously other teams you know, driving the circuit at the same time, so that sort of limits the pace, but mostly you just set your speed based on what's most efficient. Um, and then over the road, the cross-country race, um, we have a whole convoy, lead car, and a chase car. Um, and at that point, I think it's still a solar car that sets the speed because we want them to get their max efficiency. Uh, everybody on the team gets to drive the car. Uh, we don't find the lightest person. Uh, so in the regulations, it has that uh, if you wish to drive the car, uh, if, you're under one, if you're under 80 kilograms or 176 pounds, basically you get a bag of lead shot where they add you to ballast you to the same weight. So everybody gets to drive the car unless you're, I mean, even if I'm like, I weigh more than that. So like, I designed it, I'm saying I'm gonna drive it. <laughs> like academically, there's, there's no sort of course where I would be learning the variety of skills that I've learned through this. In classes, you primarily have a lot of theory in terms of engineering and applied engineering. Um, but the solar car team really allows you to sort of take what you've learned in the classroom and actually be able to physically apply it and see what works, what doesn't work, because it's very different uh, when you're talking about ideals on the you know, blackboard versus when you're actually here and you try to fit two assemblies together and you realize that there's some tolerance mismatch or there's some parts that don't fit together and they should. And it just gives you a better sense and perspective of like what the difficulties of a project and the difficulties of engineering are. The, I mean, hands-on experience is the, is the number one thing you get. Um, our mission statement of NU Solar is that we are trying to build better engineers. We just happen to do it by building a solar car. I guess NU Solar is sort of run a little bit like a startup, um, where we have this business side to take care of like funding for our team, which would be um, sponsorship. And then we also have like, so company relations would talk to like say Boeing and stuff, and then ask for like in-kind donations and make sure we have good company relations with them. Uh, so the build cycle for the car for usually is around, uh, most universities come out with a new car every two years and you know they're always trying to approach the peaks of aerodynamic efficiency, uh, electrical efficiency in terms of battery choice, battery selection, and also pay you know, special attention to your solar cells as well. Uh, this is SC6, this is our sixth solar car. Um, it's what's called a monocoque car, which means it doesn't have an internal frame. All the, the main loads of the car are supported by these two carbon fiber ribs. And then this shell, which is also made of carbon fiber, um, kind of supports the car this way and keeps it, keeps it from bending. Um, inside here are about 400 uh, individual lithium ion battery cells. Each one's at about 3.9 volts. Um, and we package them into modules of 13 cells each um, to get the appropriate amount of current what you just saw was the bottom half, and this is the top half, or the top shell for short. Um, these are all of our solar cells, which allow us to recharge the batteries while we're driving using the power from the sun. They are monocrystal and silicon, which means that each one of these blue squares is a single crystal with no imperfections. Um, so they're incredibly difficult to make. We don't make them, we buy them. Um, but they're also easy, really easily damaged. So if you dent a cell, 
um, it basically damages the entire cell, um, and so it won't produce as much energy, which is why you have to be incredibly careful with some of these. This knob, if the car is like on fire and you need to turn off the car, you hit this knob. It won't, shot, it won't stop the fire, but it will disconnect the batteries, um, so hopefully not exacerbating the situation. What, what employers really value is the fact that you have done something more than the bare minimum, in a sense. You've done more, more than you know, uh, achieving for your degree, which is not an easy feat, but you, you, know, you have to stand out amongst your peers. Uh, and they, what they really care about is that it is a, a true engineering extracurricular. You have, you, know, you have to optimize structures. You have to really care about all the load cases and sort of the life, psych, you know, the life span of your vehicle, what it will endure during its service life. And these are all very real engineering problems that you do for anywhere. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about student organizations at top colleges, just subscribe. Guys, I, I can't go forward. There's a camera there. <laughs>